Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing my recipe for Swedish meatballs. Now these are little meatballs that are simmered down in a creamy and flavorful sauce, and then I'm serving them over egg noodles today, but if you wanted to, you could serve them over any type of pasta, you could serve it with a crusty piece of bread, or you could honestly eat them on their own. It is really, really delicious. So if you wanna see how I put together this warming and comforting dish, please continue watching. The ingredients that I'm going to need for my Swedish meatballs include some ground turkey, ground parmesan cheese, some breadcrumbs, Worcestershire sauce, paprika and garlic powder to flavor, some salt to taste in the meatballs, and now for the sauce portion we're going to need some finely chopped onions, a little bit of garlic, and I'm using hot pepper which is optional, a little bit of butter, some heavy cream as well as some whole milk and I'm also going to need some salt to taste. Now other than that I'm also going to need some black pepper for the meatballs and for the sauce as well as some olive oil to fry up my meatballs and to help me put together this. Sauce. So I'm going to start off by putting my ground turkey into my bowl. I'm going to season it with salt and you remember you want to use salt to taste and then I'm going to go in with my breadcrumbs as well as my parmesan cheese. That parmesan cheese is going to add a nice moistness to the dish and also a sweet nutty flavor. And I'm also going to go in with my Worcestershire sauce. Whenever seasoning any type of meat, I love using Worcestershire sauce because it gives that really savory umami flavor to a dish and I really love that. And now I'm going in with my paprika as well as my garlic powder. If you have any other herbs or dried spices that you want to use in this dish, feel free to go ahead and use those. It just depends on your taste and your preferences. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mix all of these ingredients together and remember not to over mix it too much because if you do that meat will turn hard when you go to cook it. I almost forgot but I'm going in with my black pepper. Now I'm using freshly ground black pepper from my pepper mill. I totally recommend that for this dish because I really like that black pepper flavor when it's fresh, especially when making meatballs. I just like the flavor that it gives. If you only have the already ground stuff, that is totally fine. I use that in my cooking all the time and it works out perfectly. So again, you just want to massage everything through that meat really well so this way everything's well combined and then we'll move on to making the meatballs. So what I did was I took about a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half measurement of my meat mixture and I went ahead and I rolled them into balls. Now a word of advice when making meatballs and rolling them. You don't want to roll them super, super tight because the tighter that you roll them and the harder you roll them, the more compact and the more dense they're going to be. And if you want a meatball that's nice and soft, you don't want to roll it super tight. So now we're going to move on to the frying process. So whenever I make meatballs, I do like to shallow fry them or pan fry them in my pan. I just like the brownness and the crispiness that they do get on the outside. I think it adds more flavor. So what I'm going to do is I covered the bottom of my pot with a little bit of olive oil. I would say I use maybe half a cup of olive oil just to cover the bottom a little bit. And now I'm going in with my meatballs. And on a medium to medium high heat, I'm going to continue frying them on all sides until they are beautiful and golden brown. Now remember during this step, we are not fully cooking them. We're just par cooking them because they will cook fully in that sauce. And um, I just really want to get them brown all over the outside. As you guys can see, these meatballs are frying up really well. After about two minutes, I'm going ahead and just flipping them over. And as you guys can see, the bottoms are beautiful and golden brown. Now, I want you guys to be very careful. Don't put the heat up too high because that Parmesan cheese will be very quick to burn that's in these meatballs. So just keep on watching it. Keep on flipping them over so they get an even brown coating. And when they're done frying up, you're going to transfer them onto a plate and you're going to drain off that excess oil. Now once you finish browning off all of your meatballs and you transfer them out of the pot onto another plate, you're going to begin working on the sauce. So in my pan here, I've melted a little bit of butter and I'm going in with some olive oil as well. And now I'm going to add in my garlic and the hot pepper to sear a little bit in the pan. Now I'm going in with those finely chopped onions and I'm going to fry these ingredients or saute them in that butter and that oil for maybe about one to two minutes until they soften up a little bit. Remember, you do not want them to get super brown because whenever you're making Swedish meatballs, the sauce isn't really brown. You just want it to have a light tan color to it. So my onions, the garlic, as well as the pepper have been frying up or sauteing for about a minute or two now. As you guys can see, they've softened up really well and they have a slight golden color to them. 
Now at this point, I'm adding in a little bit of all-purpose flour. Now I did forget to mention this in the beginning with the rest of my ingredients, but remember everything will be in the description box down below so you can see all of the ingredients and the measurements. Basically, once you add your flour into the pot, you're gonna keep it on about a medium to medium low heat, and you're gonna allow it to parch or roast with the garlic, the onions, and the peppers until it is cooked out. That'll take about two minutes. And after that two minutes, you're gonna go in with your milk as well as your heavy cream. Now, if you don't have heavy cream, you can use full whole milk. And if you don't have whole milk, you can even use evaporated milk. And I've even used almond milk to put this together and it tastes a little bit different, but honestly, you still get the same type of product in the end. Now, once you go in with that milk and that cream, you wanna make sure that the heat is still on a medium to medium low heat because if it's on a high heat, the milk will scald or burn when you added it. After about five minutes of bubbling away, you're gonna see that your sauce has thickened up really well. Once it's thickened up as per your liking, you're gonna go in with all of your meatballs. Now what you're gonna do is lower the heat to the lowest setting, you're gonna stir up the meatballs, and then you're gonna cover it and allow it to simmer for about five to 10 minutes or until your meatballs are fully cooked on the inside. And then at that point, it will be ready to serve. So my meatballs have been simmering on a low heat for an additional 10 minutes. And this is just so this way the meatballs could cook fully on the inside. And honestly guys, do not overcook your meatballs because sometimes they tend to get hard, they tend to get dry and too dense on the inside. But this looks great. I love the thickness of the sauce. Remember we are serving it over some pasta, so don't make it too thick. And once you've gone ahead and tasted that sauce for any salt and other seasonings that you may wanna adjust, you're gonna go ahead and get yourself a bed of egg noodles or you could serve it with rice, any other pasta or a piece of crusty bread. And you're gonna to top it with the sauce as well as those meatballs. Now guys, I'm being very honest. This is not one of the most appealing dishes, but it is so delicious and so flavorful. So I hope this is something that you go ahead and try. And if you try it, please let me know down below if you enjoyed it. I went ahead and I topped it with a little bit of basil because that's the only herb I had on hand, but you can top it with anything. If you enjoyed this video today, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you aren't subscribed yet, and I'll see you guys again very soon.